IASM, the Introduction to the Arts and Sciences in Medicine. This is the first learning block of our medical curriculum. To some of us, it might just mean basic sciences, and to some others, particularly my colleague who's just graduated from high school, might mean it is a huge learning curve from the high school biology course. <laughs> But to me, a postgrad student who has probably been through the prep cycle and amino acids for hundreds of times, I ASM to me, I've come to realize it is just a bunch of medical concepts in disguise of funny and cool acronyms. Obviously, citrate is a silly, super funny molecule. In glaciers in Alaska locate isolated prowlers. Yeah, I know we always do that. But bear in mind, this is not something that is necessarily easy. This is absolutely the time where the foundation of medical knowledge is consolidated. And if we do not take this time seriously, one would find it difficult to grasp future knowledge due to the cumulative nature of science in medicine. And of course, no one in reality will ask you about Krebs cycle. So what really the game plan to the majority of us medical students? To understand the level of trickiness our professor could get when it comes to exams, as well as trial and error of our study methods and time management strategies to achieve what most students will strive for, passing medical exams while having a work-life balance. So I thought it is worthwhile to document some of the learnings after each of my learning block as to reflect upon some of the lessons that I've learned at the same time to showcase what I actually have been through in medical school. So for people who are watching who would like to understand what it is really like studying and medicine, this is I think a video for you guys. So to start off, I thought it would be worthwhile to talk about the structure of this semester. And this learning block includes 83 teaching lectures, 16 practicals, and 6 what we call PBL learnings. And it essentially means problem-based learning. It is a time where medical students and one tutor gather together in the discussion room. And then we'll begin discussing the case for around 2 hours, revolving around the clinical points, ethics, communication, and so on. How do you think uh, the PBL go? Oh, okay. pretty good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love the team. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. good, good dynamics. And on top of it, we also have to attend various workshops, field trips. High school field trip. Not the high hot toy field trip. You get selfie. Hi. 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 And even clinical attachment at this early stage of our medical career. You may be wondering why I am not at campus and I'm in this full formal attack. So there's this preceptorship program at HKU that basically encourages students to already go in hospital and shadow a doctor so to kind of understand the day in the life being a doctor. What it's like to observe the daily routine and day-to-day -day interaction with the patient. So here I am. Very excited. Hey, Dan, you in today uh, to shadow some doctors. It is definitely eventful to the least. In particular, the PIP component, which means professionalism in practice, is something that I want to specifically speak about. In first year, the PIP component is a one day clinical attachment in primary care. And personally, I'm especially grateful on the fact that we get to experience clinical learning at this early stage of our medical career. Although one may argue that as medical students in first year are just the ultimate space occupying lesion, just being there not understanding a single thing. It is therefore my focus in these clinical learning sessions was put on observing the doctor's professionalism and etiquette and how it has ultimately provided comfort and relief to the patient. These are skills which I think are equally as important to becoming a good and empathetic doctor on top of medical knowledge, which we will accumulate later down the line. The entire experience is fruitful to the least, and more importantly has allowed me to set some expectations and goals of what it means to be a professional in the medical field. Clinical practicals is the time where we learn about very hands-on thing happening in a clinical setting. <laughs> oh. 
Make sure you sit properly. Bro. Open your mouth and then say ah, it's different. So, mother, how? Come back here. You got my money. Ah, the man, ah, better tell that. Ah, familiarize. And then make sure you do the labels correctly. You are good. I am a Hong Kong university graduate. The first year of high school. Please welcome you. Sing Chen. Sing Chen is a lady. I will help you with your test. Is there any problem? No problem. Okay. 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 八啊啊，大概係七十六。Cross check。六十。It is a time where we practice on each other, on our medical friends or medical student friends. Very hands on. Uh, it certainly requires a whole lot of communication skills, and also practical menu skills. At the same time, uh, I find it enjoyable too. And at the end of the semester is our first medical exam, the formative exam. The first exams to the course design is actually just a taster exams, which means it does not count towards your final grades. And I certainly appreciate this approach, as it not only help us to familiarize the formats of the exam, but also to understand the level of stress and readiness. As well as preparation strategies associated with it. Reactions of Year One medical student finishing their first exam. So taking together from this first semester, this year some of the things I've learned. Besides from the hard science and medicine, this is really the time where most of us are experimenting our study methods. I've always been a fan of using Notion to organize my notes, and this is what I did. However, I've also started to incorporate some of the More powerful tools such as Anki and ChatGPT to enhance my learning, and essentially this is really just based on a model that I have used to follow a framework called the Bloom's Taxonomy to tackle different levels of learning. For example, Anki would be in the level of enhancing active recall in the remembering stage, and ChatGPT could be in the stage of creating、uh, new multiple choice questions to examine my understanding. All right, so currently I'm going to make a tutor's chatbot,、uh, which I'm going to name Lecture GPT. The amazing thing about this Lecture GPT is that it could train on your lecture slides, and then you can ask them to create questions or summaries that is based on、uh, the lecture slides that you gave the chatbot. So it will prevent hallucinations and finding unvalidated sources online. Okay, I'm just gonna upload a couple、uh, related to microbiology. Okay, and then press train chatbot. Successfully trained, and then now I'm gonna ask him to ask the chatbot to generate ten questions,、uh, MCQ questions, with answer keys to assess my understanding on these particular subjects. Nice. Alright. So yeah, as you can see, with just a few clicks and a few words of prompting, you could technically generate limitless practice question to help in into your learning. So, I guess this is another method that I want to introduce to you guys, which has helped me a lot throughout my learning journey in medical school right now. So yeah, this platform that you guys are seeing is called TechMed AI. And this is a company that my friend and I are trying to develop, and our, and our mission is to help students supercharge their learning through cutting-edge technology such as AI. And I'm excited to share with you guys that we are currently launching a flagship product called PDF to Anki, which utilizes AI to convert your PDF files such as lecture slides, notes, and PPTs into a 
format that can be imported into Anki and convert them into flashcards automatically. So we're currently launching a private beta waitlist so I'll leave a link down below in the description box for you guys to try it out. If you guys are interested in, in my approach of studying, definitely leave a comment to let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to make a video on the study strategies that I've applied throughout the years. Ideally, at this early stage of our medical school, we want to develop a effective and efficient study habits that is adequate to fulfill the requirements of the rigorous medical curriculum at the same time having some sort of work-life balance or so some might think. Taking together this first semester is uh, eventful to the least and if you guys enjoy this video definitely give me a thumbs up and if you want to follow my journey in medical school definitely subscribe and comment if you have any questions at all. So with that all said thank you for watching I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye.